Hey guys, what's happening? What's happening? Fifteen dollars, one pound of beeswax. Fifteen dollars worth. Hobby Lobby, okay? What'd I pay for it? Mommy has some coupons, and I got this block for seven dollars and change. Isn't that nice? Mommy looks out for me. Mommy is my bride. Okay. Now, they put wax on these, but they don't put them. They spray the wax on there, but they don't do that much. So, to kick it up a notch, put a little list on, or you can just melt some wax in a double boiler and just paint it on. You don't need much. Actually, what they spray on in a flow, if you're on a flow, is plenty. They will draw right on. They will take it right off on. Back in the day, in the 80s, when we first started using the Plastacell, uh, I bought it. I bought it with no uh, wax on it whatsoever. Just just plain but I was putting bees on a hot flow in other words when I pulled in to that site my bloom was already open or it's going to be a day or two before it opened and I had some very good locations that uh, you know gave me a lot of nectar because all I was doing, I wasn't really selling bees back in them days, in the 80s. In late 70s and 80s, I was uh, making honey. Chasing a bloom. That's all I did, chase the bloom. Move them bees four times a year. I never got into the pollination game, but uh, it's lucrative, I guess, if you guys want to get into that game. Yeah, see the country. They're screaming for bees in, in all in the almonds there in California. So you guys are gonna have to get up to close to a thousand colonies or more to make that, you know, profitable. I got a friend that's just east of me, about two hours east of me. He uh, he runs five thousand colonies. Uh, yeah, he's a busy man. He owns his own, uh, he owns his own tractor trailer. So what he'll do is haul the bees out. He winters here in Florida because this is his home base. Then he takes off to California in the spring. He, he get he tries to get the orange blossom here first thing in the spring. And then he takes off and goes there. And then he hits that crop. He'll leave his rig there, jump on an airplane, come back let them do their thing on that crop, fly back out, pick his bees back up, and then he is on the road with uh, Waylon and Willie and the boys all the way to uh, Massachusetts, and then he goes into Maine for the cranberries, I mean the uh, blueberries. He's hitting the cranberries in, in Massachusetts and then going into Maine. Get out of that gig and you come back to Florida and you winter here in Florida and you get yourself a suntan. How's that, okay? All right, let me show you something else I did this morning here. <laughs> here in the barn, what have I got here? Let me put my wax over here to bed. Pine needles, these are the pine needles. In that park I go to take my hike every morning. I gather these up with my walking stick in about five minutes. Just break around. There's a huge, there's a huge pine tree there as I pull in the park, in the parking lot. Well, what's happening here? The vehicles are running over this stuff. And normally, like here's a fresh pine needle right here, stiff. <laughs> but after you run over it with vehicles and all, it turns to this nice fluffy stuff, but it had moisture dew all over it. So I just stuff a garbage bag 
in my back pocket. I walk in, do my hike on the way out. I gather these up, takes me five minutes. And uh, it's, it's on a lot of shell. So I got a lot of shell here, but that's no biggie because I take my rake and I rake it up and all the shells stay on the floor here. So you just scatter your pile out, put a fan on it, let it blow all day long. By nightfall, this stuff dries a chip and it will light up in a hurry. So then I stuff it in a bag, you're good to go. Don't put this stuff wet in a bag, you're going to have mold issues. All right, the neighbor of that property over there is out of honey. And uh, called me Steve-O, I'm hungry for honey. I said, no problem, I'll see what I can do. So um, we're heading over there now. I've got those two deep boxes. And while we're there, let's take that uh, hive that I, that I took Rob the nuke out of and see if we can incorporate these deeps in with that those mediums and try to filter through and get those crappy frames out there's a bunch of frames that I don't like a lot of drone comb stuff that just needs to be melted down trash it out when the bees get on this plaster cell and pull it out you'll have a nice product and um, yeah, it works good. Now, if the colony ever collapses on you and you have this plaster cell in and say you were a lazy beekeeper, you didn't get in there quick enough and, and say you got slimed. You guys that raise bees for a while know what sliming is. When, when, say if you get overrun with beetles, you may get slimed. And when it is, that stuff is trash. So you've got to uh, clean that mess out. And uh, you've got to what I will do in that case a lot of times is just dip them frames in boiling water. You got to be careful because you'll warp them. You'll warp them plastic cell and then you can just throw them away once you warp them. It's no good. You can salvage the frames probably but not the, but not the plastic. It's garbage. So you got to be careful. If you don't warp it don't put this stuff in sunlight now. These UVs will warp this stuff. Don't put it in sunlight. Cover it up. Keep it covered. And um uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, when you go to, say, you do have a, a colony collapse and it's destroyed with wax moth or whatever, you can clean that stuff up and melt in a double boiler that cheap wax, get it on sale, and just paint that on with a brush. Just a light hit, and then you can reuse it, put it back in your box, you're good to go again. So let's get over there and see if we can't rob out a frame from my buddy and... Um, and uh, mix up them frames a little bit. See over there at the see over there at the bee yard. Yeah, what do we got here, guys? Mission here is to steal some honey. And this is a nice frame of honey right here. But what I got to make sure is 
that this isn't plasticell. And it isn't. This is run on, this is, this is natural comb. There's no plasticell here. And, uh, yeah. All these hives were full just like this. Until we had a swarming problem. We had that swarming thing going on. Yeah, this, this whole thing, this whole box here is full of honey. I'm gonna go ahead and steal this one from my bud. Brush these bees off over here. Come on, girls, get on out of here. It's not yours anymore, Stevo's. I gotta pay the bills, you know. Actually, this fella here, that uh, this place I'm at here, uh, he doesn't charge me other than, you know, some honeycomb. So we got a nice piece of honeycomb here. He'll like that. That's how we pay the bills. So we'll get this shoved in here. A plastic bag here so we don't get honey all over the truck. We're just going to take one frame for now. I want them to have to keep as much of that resource as they can. Go downstairs here. Get a storm coming in uh, probably tomorrow or so. <laughs> They're not the best and happiest right now uh, because of that storm coming. So my plan is here. Let's put in uh, let's put in one of these in here and then. Uh, plasticell, one of these plasticell back and forth. This is not a good frame here. See what I'm talking about? There's blowout holes. There's a lot of pollen in here though. There's a lot of resources here. That's a frame we're going to get rid of. There's a beautiful frame of pollen. Let's get that in there. Let's get one of these in there. Lots of pollen there. A 
lot of drone comb here. A lot of drone comb. I got a lot of eggs here. They wouldn't cut one of these strings here. The girls cut one of them strings. This is kind of a crappy frame, drone comb and stuff. But I got a lot of eggs in here on this, on this brood. <clears throat> gonna put that in let's go get another deep here Put this one on top. This one on top of here. Let's get these frames out. A little shot of smoke. A lot of brood here, a lot of newly laid eggs in here. I would think this is a frame she would be on. Yeah, a lot of laid back brood here. Looking good. Looking good. Yeah, see our season is just starting, so this looks good. Let's get this puppy in here. What do we got over here? There's a lot of brand new eggs here on this natural comb. She's plugged every hole, guys, in this little piece of comb here. Every comb, every hole is plugged. Now they had they're just getting this drawed out. But every everything is plugged slap full. We're putting this one in here. This one's coming in here. Probably crawling around inside this box right here, so we're gonna do a little drop here. All right, I'm 
gonna drop this one in here. Let's see what we got left. Little pop of smoke. This is a garbage frame here as far as I'm concerned. And what I'll do here with these garbage frames, I'm setting them out over here. I'm gonna let these bees rob these out. Take these frames and shake them in here. <coughs> what I'm gonna do though is put a, I'll put this box on here. Kinda act as a funnel. All honey here, guys. So, here's what we're gonna do. I've got that third box. I've got that third box over there. I'm gonna throw it on here and checkerboard that. Take these frames and not put them in the sun. It don't take no time to warp these things. I have not found the queen yet, guys. Not found a queen yet, so what we're gonna do here is shake these bees in here. All honey. She's more than likely not on the, any of these frames here. But you never know. See, we got this box of bees here. Pick them up. Drop them in. Got bees all over this lid here. Drop them in. Now, I'm going to take one of these, drop it in, one of these honey frames. I just seen a high beetle run around under there. First one I've seen. I hate them little pot liquors. I hate them. But you just deal with it, you know, guys. Okay, I got one more frame of honey here. I'm gonna throw it in here too. Alright, now what I need to do is just leave this hive alone. Leave this hive alone for about three weeks, come back. 
see what we got here. And uh, see, I put on here three eight queen right, three eight queen right breeder. And we'll keep pumping sugar to them. Whoops, I forgot something, guys. Forgot my high beetle trap. Get it in there. There's another one here. Actually, there's two more here. I'm going to jack this up and slide it under here. this side slide this up under here like it so yeah they're just kind of chilling out here so we bombed this hive out pretty good I'm going to leave these here. I'll come back tomorrow. I'll let them come in here and rob all that honey and stuff out of there. Then I'll take this stuff back to the barn, cut it out, and melt it down. I realized something yesterday. When I was looking at this video, I didn't explain something to you guys very well about the Tully Veil. This little Tully Veil here. I didn't explain something good. He's got, if I take this off, I'm going to get popped. But let me explain something to you. Originally, all of this line you see here was attached here all this string all the way around they have the elastic at the top but this whole thing went clear around well I don't like that because what happened when you pull down this zips all up right up to here tight and if you're working mean bees they're gonna be stinging your throat like you wouldn't believe learned that the hard way yeah I took so many I was loading out bees at night with that scenario and them bees got around my neck so bad guys all I could do was talk like this. My throat was closing off. But I had built up a very good immunity to it. But still, you, even at that, you take so many hits, you're going to swell. So my throat was swelling off. I didn't have a breathing problem. I wasn't getting freaked out or anything. But anyway, I didn't like that from day one. Okay, so... What I do with these tully veils is leave this large wide open here. And then you throw a knot in here while it's wide open. And then I put a knot here so it wouldn't zip tight. This won't, this won't close down. Originally they had it so you can run through that ring. Dumb idea in my opinion. So you tie a knot there. And then I put open came down a couple inches through another knot. Now I've got to created the loop. So then I took the extra string and it went in the back, which wasn't originally there. Then the other stupid thing I noticed when I was doing the video, I told you to pass both of these lines through here. And sometimes I can't chew gum and walk at the same time. Okay. So, you, play, you pass one line through. The other one's here. Then you pull it down. Don't pull it down so far that you know, you're, you're tight on your head. And then you just throw your little shoelace loopy in there. And now you've got it. So I thought I'd clear that up. Hope that helps. And uh, we'll come back here in a few weeks and uh, 
see how these puppies are doing. Hopefully these virgins came back and are, are laying good to where we can get right back in because we're going to do the same thing to these other colonies. We're going we're to incorporate deeps and eventually work out all of the mediums. Save some medium equipment for fall because in the fall, in the fall we're going to have, we're going to be, I just secured a good pepper crop. It's right on waterfront property. And uh, yeah, and it's beautiful. It's, he's actually an old Michigan beekeeper. I just found it by accident. He had a place for sale and I called him and we got to chit chat and uh, hit it off good. And he's, he said, let me know when you want to go in. He's got it for sale. <laughs> But he said the property won't move, and he don't care if it moves or not, I don't think. So he's heading up to Michigan. He said he's got a guy local. Give him a shout. He'll give that guy a shout. He'll match up with me, give me a key to the gate, and it'll be mine in September and October. And he is sitting in a Brazilian pepper, uh, yeah, honey house. It is great. Okay, guys. I'll see you on the next one. Be happy. Bye-bye.